Good morning. This is Jim Chastain, FRC Lab View Mentor. What I have here is the <clears throat> motor control example from the FRC example list, and I have it connected to a robot. We're going to run the code. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see that. Uh, we have communications, we have joystick, now we have robot code, and as I enable the code, I'm actually looking at the camera on the on the robot itself, and it's looking at the, the motor that's connected to PWM0. And what I'm going to do is, as I move the signal, control signal positive, I see the motor turning backwards. As I move it negative, I see the motor turning forward. Okay, it may surprise folks to know in my, in my repertoire, this is the most important piece of information I can pass along. So let me digress. I consider this probably the most important advice if if you, a programmer can truly understand what I'm about to go through, this is the most important advice I think I can give you as a mentor. There will come a time when you're involved with FRC robots when nothing is, is absolutely nothing is working on your robot. And more of, most often it will be when you're under a time deadline, everybody's going to be looking at you and you're sitting there trying to figure out why your program's not working. Turns out every time a robot is handled, there's actually a chance for wires to come loose. And in fact, even worse, uh, someone accidentally or inadvertently reconnects the wire incorrectly or something breaks or the battery goes dead. There's all kind of bad things that can happen every time, every time, not just when we transport it to the contest, but every time we put the robot away. And so I recommend to save time that you develop a process that you not only have a lot of confidence in, but you can do with your eyes shut and you can follow that process no matter what the pressure is or what else is going on around you or how off the wall other people are acting. And I, I offer that with every bit of humility I can muster because I've, I've been in that situation and sometimes I've been the person that's acting off the wall. So my solution is to treat the robot just as if it were a prototype. And that means before you run any program code on a prototype robot, you should conduct what I call robot commissioning. And basically that's verify every channel is connected to the correct and specific Rio channel that the team agreed to and wrote down in the robot setup spreadsheet. So that means if we have agreed that the uh, channel zero on the Robo Rio is going to be connected to uh, PWM zero is going to be connected to the left front motor, then that's what I want to test before I run any code. And the way I do that is I use the examples. In this case, uh, the, the example I have absolutely the most confidence in is a basic motor control because it excludes the uh, joystick, it excludes virtually everything in the in the code except for just the icons that control the motor. So what we're doing, and and we go through ahead of time and set this uh, project up or this example up specifically. So I know all I have to do is fire it up and set up the correct channel that I want to operate and run it and it will work every time. Then again on the on the beginning robot or a prototype robot I methodically go through each one of these channels and verify okay channel zero worked now if what happens on channel two excuse me PWM1 again we deploy it and once we get program code we enable it now, in this case, my camera won't show me the uh, Robo Rio, well, it won't show me the correct motor running, but I can hear it. And as I push the positive signal, which means this joystick is going backwards, what direction does the motor run? 
and then as I move the signal negative, which means the joystick's going positive or forward, which direction does the motor run? All that has to make sense. Now, what is all this stuff telling me? Just in, in this first two examples. Uh, first of all, I want to have the camera on because that convinces me or lets me know that the communications with the Robo Rio are are intact. If you don't get a camera image uh, and you have a camera hooked up, then something's wrong with your communications. And that tells you where to start. What when we get into when we get beyond just the prototype stage and we verify every uh, channel is working, when we get into the uh, game environment or we get into a time deadline, going through this process will let you check the different stages. In this case, we see that the uh, camera is working well, so that means our communication is good. We see our communications and joysticks are hooked up. So at that point, there's probably nothing wrong in the uh, driver's station connection to the Robo Rio. And now we're back to making sure we had the right channels. And that's the reason for the examples, running the examples. Um, so anyway, if you if you discipline yourself to do go through this process, and I mean every channel in the Robo Rio, every time you step up to the robot and turn it on for the first time. So if you work on it daily, go through this process every day. If you work on it weekly, if you work on it, somebody handles it and then you come back to it and it's been out of your control, make sure you know absolutely that you can make at least one example work correctly uh, beyond all doubt. Okay, just a little bit of advice. Uh, I personally think it's probably the most important thing I can offer to students because it's bailed out my bacon many, many, many times in the process of uh, working in the FRC program. Hope that helped. I'll talk at you later.